So my goal is to try to teach you something new about your hydrometer. Uh, let's give this a go. So first off, reading these things, uh, for me, I screwed up so much initially in the beginning. And it's really simple once you know this. When you're reading the hydrometer, take the first two numbers from the left side and then take the last two numbers from the right side. So how do we do this in example? On the left side of your hydrometer, in this case, 1.0. And then on the right side, if this is where our reading is, would be 1, 2. So 1.0, 1, 2. And then we have an accurate reading. So if the reading happens to be below 1.0, anything here would be a 0 0.9, 8, 2, 9, 2, and that's kind of how uh, you make sure you get the right readings every time. So I was reading the 1.1 here, when in fact this is 1.01, and 1.1 would be down here, which is an entirely different animal. Okay, great, so now we know how the numbers work. Where do you read to? You read to the top of the meniscus. Now I've heard a couple of other videos and I've heard of some other advice of reading below that line. I still have the instructions with mine and that's what we're going to just follow the instructions to get the proper readings. Now at least if you're inconsistently reading both times, you're still gonna get the correct values of your uh, alcohol but if you're going to be asking for help on a forum or something like that, getting the correct details will help other people help you. Now we can also verify that this is the way the manufacturer wants us to read this by just using plain tap water and verifying that the top of the meniscus is a 1.000. In the case of this, to make sure I am not misreading anything, I'm also using RO water because I happen to have that around. Okay, so the other thing to kind of keep in mind too is this device Although it's super simple how this works, it's just a buoyancy checker essentially. It's balanced so that straight tap water is a 1.0. Now if you add sugar to this, it's going to add uh, density to the liquid. And the more dense the liquid is, the higher the hydrometer is going to rise and the less dense. So in the case of alcohol, alcohol is less dense than the water. This thing will just sink more and that's how this thing works. Why that is important is when you're measuring at the start of the ferment, you're measuring two things actually. You're measuring the liquid content in the must and you're measuring the sugar content in the must. Because keep in mind, water is 1.0 and sugar is more dense. So we wanna just see how much sugar is in there. Now why this is important is if we don't get a starting reading and we don't get an ending reading after ferment, if we back sweeten, we're now measuring three things and we don't know which of the three things that we're measuring, if that makes any sense. To clarify a little bit, once the ferment is totally finished, we want a hydrometer reading there and then we want another hydrometer reading after we back sweetened it to know the difference of uh, start of ferment to end of ferment, that gives us our alcohol content, and then end of ferment to how much we've back sweetened that hydrometer reading lets us know exactly how much. So if we want to replicate what we're doing with our batches, we can have a scientific or a way that we can repeat. Maybe the juice is different the next time you do that ferment and ferments to a different dryness. Well, if we know that we back sweetened or we added uh, 0.04 of sugar and that's what we liked, well, we can repeat that uh, exactly if we want, or we can subjectively uh, just sweeten to taste. The downside to doing it that way is if a wine doesn't progress fully till six, seven months down the road, and the way it tastes, or the way that the sweetness tastes to you at that moment, it might not age out the same way. So the whole purpose of using a hydrometer is just to make sure that we can get as much data as possible so when we're making another batch of wine later on we can repeat and get the same result or as close to the same result as something that we liked in the past 
Okay, so the other thing uh, about a hydrometer too that you do need to be aware of, it does or is calibrated on temperature that will make small variations as long as you're kind of using it in the same area which is thermostatically controlled so it's pretty much always the same or very close to the same temperature in here but it's just something to be aware of because if you do start a batch in here and then you cold crash it and you're measuring your hydrometer reading then you might get a result that's quite a bit further off so be aware of that Temperature does matter as well. Try to get the temperature as close to the same from start to end reading. So another part of our scale as well is the, if we turn it kind of to the side, you'll see the uh, percent of alcohol. Now that is for the start of ferment only, and that's to give us a rough idea what the potential for alcohol is, provided that the yeast will eat its way all the way through till the wine is dry. Uh, just a good general guideline, anything in the green range for your home brews is fine to get going. And the reason why we want it in that green range is the higher the alcohol content, the less of a chance of acetobacter uh, getting a foothold starting and turning your wine batch into vinegar. Now where I am right now with my wine making, I'm getting curious about uh, yan, yeast nutrients, and uh, how that affects a ferment. So in the case of that, I also need bricks. Now this hydrometer that I'm using doesn't have a brick scale. Uh, don't worry if it doesn't. You can easily convert your specific gravity to a bricks number. Uh, I'll leave the formula right here and just replace the cell reference here with uh, specific gravity and that'll get you your calculation. And if you want to test your formula to make sure you didn't typo or put a bracket in the wrong spot, Okay, so I did mention fermentation being finished. So essentially, when your bubbler stops on your primary is your first indication that it's time to maybe get some hydrometer readings. And once you have no bubbling and you have three hydrometer readings that are the same for three days, that's a pretty good indication that fermentation has finally finished when it's safe to move to the next steps. This is detailed in wine kits when you uh, use them. And if you're not 100% sure, three or four days at another day, that hydrometer reading should stay exactly the same. And that lets us know that that must is in a state of balance or that wine mix is in a state of balance or whatever you happen to be brewing. I hope this helps whoever else was struggling with reading this stinking thing and understanding it. It's such a simple device, yet I made it just way too complicated. So hopefully that helps you out. If you like content like this, give me a subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video.